On the screen, we can see two fundamental diagrams for the operation of a chiller system, an essential component in many industrial and HVAC processes. These diagrams are divided into two main parts, the chilled water circuit and the refrigeration circuit. On the left side of the diagram is the chilled water circuit, which is crucial for the conditioning process of the chiller as it allows for the necessary cooling for the optimal operation of the system. This part of the circuit is responsible for delivering cold water to the places where it is needed, ensuring the system operates efficiently and effectively. On the right side, we find the refrigeration circuit, which is responsible for the efficient operation of the chiller, ensuring the cooling process is carried out effectively and without interruptions. This circuit handles the refrigerant, which is the key fluid for heat transfer in the system. In the diagram of the chilled water circuit on the left, several crucial components for the system's operation are clearly visible. Among these components is the primary pump, strategically located at the top of the diagram. This pump plays an essential role as its main function is to move water from the storage tank to the chiller's evaporator or cooler. The water cooling process begins here, in the evaporator, where heat exchange between the water and the refrigerant is facilitated. The water entering the evaporator is significantly cooled, and this cooled water is subsequently used in various industrial and HVAC applications, such as air conditioning systems and refrigeration in factories. The chilled water circuit is not limited to the primary pump, it also includes a secondary pump located at the bottom of the diagram. This secondary pump has an equally crucial function, transporting the already cooled water to the application point where cooling is needed. This application point can vary considerably, but generally refers to HVAC systems or industrial processes that require controlled temperatures to function correctly. The secondary pump is responsible for ensuring that the cold water is distributed effectively and efficiently, providing the necessary flow and pressure to meet the system's demands. Additionally, it is vital that this pump operates reliably to ensure the continuity of the cooling process. In the right side diagram, a conventional refrigeration circuit operating within the chiller is detailed. This circuit is fundamental to the system's operation as it handles the refrigerant, a fluid that circulates through the system and is responsible for heat transfer. The refrigeration circuit is composed of several essential components, a compressor, a condenser, an expansion valve, and an evaporator. Each of these components has a specific and fundamental role in the refrigeration process. For example, the compressor is responsible for moving the refrigerant through the circuit, increasing its pressure and temperature so it can be efficiently condensed in the next step of the process. This pressure increase is crucial for the heat transfer that occurs in the condenser. The evaporator, on the other hand, is the component where the thermal exchange with the water occurs. At this point in the system, the refrigerant, initially in a liquid state, absorbs heat from the water, changing its state to vapor. This state change is a crucial aspect of the refrigeration process, as it is the means by which heat is removed from the water. It is important to note that, although the water and the refrigerant share the evaporator, there is no direct contact between them as they circulate through separate pipes. This is crucial to avoid cross-contamination and maintain the system's efficiency, ensuring the cooling process is safe and effective. The heat exchange in the cooler is a central process in the operation of the chiller. Water enters the cooler at a higher temperature, and thanks to the thermal exchange, with the refrigerant, its temperature decreases significantly. This cooling process is what allows the chiller to fulfill its main function of maintaining a controlled temperature in the system. A key technical term in this process is delta T, which represents the difference between the inlet and outlet temperatures of the water in the cooler. This temperature differential 
is a crucial indicator of the system's efficiency and is especially relevant in air conditioning applications, where the delta T is usually about 5 degrees Celsius or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. A higher delta T indicates greater efficiency in the heat transfer process. The refrigerant cycle within the chiller is a continuous and cyclic process essential to the system's operation. By absorbing heat in the evaporator, the refrigerant changes state from liquid to vapor, allowing the heat to be transferred from the water to the refrigerant. This vapor, now at low pressure, is drawn in by the compressor, which increases its pressure and directs it to the condenser. In the condenser, the refrigerant releases the absorbed heat to the outside environment and condenses, returning to its liquid state. This process is essential for the system's heat dissipation, allowing the refrigeration cycle to continue operating without interruptions. Without this continuous cycle, the system could not maintain the efficiency and effectiveness necessary to meet cooling demands. After passing through the condenser, the refrigerant, now in a high-pressure liquid state, is directed to the expansion valve. This valve functions to reduce the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant, preparing it to re-enter the evaporator. The pressure reduction in the expansion valve is crucial because it allows the refrigerant to enter the evaporator in a suitable state to absorb more heat from the water, thus restarting the cooling cycle. This cycle repeats continuously while the chiller is in operation, ensuring a constant supply of cold water for the system.